Hello my lovelies, Roby here at Kickback Garage. Now today is the day of uh, Klokkerun, which is our official start to the season here in Norway. But as you can see, it's not really the weather for it. I mean, I could tough it out. The problem being is uh, there is loads and loads of salt on the road. I just saw a salt car truck drive down the road here. So I really don't fancy uh, getting my uh, beautiful uh, scooter salty. Anyway, but what is going to happen today is the big reveal of my new project, my Aunt Rex new project. So if that's something you fancy having a watch of, then uh, grab yourself a coffee. I'll see you after the intro. <laughs> Let's get inside. It's cold, lad. <laughs> Messing around with these cameras, batteries going flat. I created them a rang, all the sprung in log of villa come under talk. In your novice black out to other forty frog, for what to do or draw. Can we phone? Can I send and come? The husband took over, so we are the brother of some. Oh, that's. <laughs> That's the first time in, uh, ooh, let's say, down here south in Norway, that's the first time for ever. I don't think I've ever missed a clocker run, but uh, never mind. There won't be any filming of the first uh, trip out today, but I've got some really exciting news. I am going to introduce the new project me and Shrek picked up yesterday. We did a round trip of about seven hours. I saw this scooter on the uh, interwebs, I thought, I really have to have that. I really, really have to have that. So I'd like to introduce you to my Peugeot Jet. It, I'm joking, I'm joking. This is my uh, <laughs> daughter-in-law's. I'm just gonna fix it on the plate. Have a look, have a look. Turn around, let's have a look. So, <laughs> what do you think it is? What do you think it is? Uh, have a guess, have a guess. I'll give you 10 seconds to guess. It's a classic, I have to say. This is the first one I've seen on the open market um, for at least 15 or 16 years in Norway. They are super rare. There are so few of these out and about. I think they ended up being cut up, dug down in gardens, all sorts of stuff. So yes, it is a vintage and now I'm going to reveal it. What do you reckon it is? What did you say? A Lambretta. Ah, maybe, okay. Let me do 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 150 Series 1. Yes! Now, uh, I haven't really had the chance to look around it properly, so I thought I'd do that under the video. So if we get any surprises, I'm going to be uh, quite upset. Um, first thing I have to do is mention the price. Because these things don't turn up that often, we don't the people don't seem to know how much they're worth. And uh, I paid a total of £2,650. That is a bargain. Right, let's have a look. So here she is. As you can see, for off, right off the bat, <laughs> we start at the front. The forks have actually been welded up properly as well, I might add. The forks have been welded up so that they have damper brackets so you can fit proper dampers. Uh, hang on. Can you see that? Can you see that? There you go. We'll have a look at that later on uh, in another video. Um, and the reason why we're going to look at that on, the, on another video is this does have the original LA 150 uh, Series 1 backplate and they are dodgy as hell. They uh, can snap the lug on the, uh, on the brake and uh, that's a video that's coming up. I have already got hold of a Series 3 hub. I'll, sh I'll, tell you, I'll go through you and... I'll go through and tell you, I'm just so excited, I'm giddy, but it's bloody cold as well, so I'm shivering at the same time. Um, yeah, so that's cool. I'm going to change the uh, front hub to a, um, to a uh, Series 3. I really would prefer to put a disc brake on there, but I have completely killed that. I have absolutely no money whatsoever. So uh, um, 
I'm really hoping I can get hold of the parts that I need to get this back on the road. At the moment, as it stands, it is uh, unregistered and it has been stood still since like forever. And one fella bought it in 2013 and then it had some major upgrades and it has never been used. So everything, all the parts that have been changed on this are absolutely brand new. Um, so starting off with the fork, the fork, obviously, damper brackets, they're on. Uh, it's got new links. They look like uh, Evergood or Casa Lambretta, something like that. Look really nice. Uh, it has new rubbers, buffers, and new bushings in the links. That is brilliant. Uh, one little uh, niggle is the fact that it does have the original springs in there, so they probably collapse. It's a bit squishy, the front end. I really wanted to order a uh, scooter center, 10% uh, uh, beefier fork for this, but unfortunately they are empty. So I'm gonna have to wait for that, but never mind, that's good. That's not a major issue. Uh, just a little bit of a handling issue that we'll, uh, we'll sort out down the road. And with the uh, Core 2 scooters fork compressor, that means that uh, it's, it's quite an easy job. We can do that with the uh, fork in the frame. Now, as you see, it's got a reproduction uh, my god on it, but Ta -da! it did come with its original my god, and I have to say, I'm really surprised. This thing has definitely stood dry because it's. I think it's been sandblasted or something that there's some primer on there and there's a really bad white paint job, which I'm really pleased about, to tell you the truth, because uh, Sebastian, or Srek, my son, he is going to take charge of this, uh, this project here. And uh, he wants to keep this like a shabby, 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 look. So what we'll do there is, I think we'll fit the original mug guard back on so that all the colours line up. It's had some sort of repair hair, not sure what it is, but there's some primer on the top there. Um, doesn't bother me, I think I'd just keep it like that. I might actually try and patina this a little bit. And the really nice thing is it's terrible. Where are you? Get up here, <laughs> there you are. Um, here is the, is the primer that I'm talking about. And uh, I fit this, the home grill was missing. So I had a repro in my cupboard that actually didn't fit uh, my series two, but it fits the series one perfectly. So that's really nice. The paint has been applied here and there is no primer under the paint. And that goes for this paint as well, no primer, or this could be a really light gray primer. Um, but it's gonna be really easy to, to sort of mat that down a bit and uh, make it look a bit patinaed, a bit weathered, really nice. It has its original, can you still see me? Yes, you can. It has its original uh, lock, which I'm really pleased about. I've got the key. Uh, I fit a Scootopia one on that, on the original Shrek mobile. And a uh, nightmare of that is that the, the little lid uh, fell off on the first ride. So that wasn't really fantastic quality, I have to say. Um, handlebars, everything seems tight. These change the bushings. These, um, let's move it over a little bit. These need a bit of a weld up and a realigning. And uh, yeah, light looks good. I have a halogen uh, light bulb that I can fit in there. So not gonna fit the, uh, because we're on a budget, I have to do this cheap, but I think the halogen light will help a lot. When I saw pictures of it on the interwebs, I was thinking that uh, there was loads of rust on the bottom of the uh, footboard there, but that is actually not rust, it's just shit. So I can, uh, actually clean that up it's just crap so that's going to be really nice put a bit of patina on it it's got the same primer gray color the frame as you can see actually looks like it's the original color and the original strap for the uh, for the wiring loom and the frame itself has the original color it could be as well actually that the uh, the paint the, the the gray bit of the paint on this area is the original it looks, it does look very original. Um, the blue has been added later on. Let's take off the panel. Have a look. 
because as you can see it was blue but it was this blue color this is the original color on it and the panels i'm really pleased to say solid no rust really really solid it's one of the nicest looking panels i've uh, i've seen apart from the uh, nos panel that i've got on my series too obviously someone's been a bit of a burke they have put the panel handles on to the wrong <laughs> they put the panel handles on the wrong panel that's a quick fix and uh yeah really pleased with that another thing that uh has been done is let me put the panel on another thing that has been done is oh look at that <laughs> that's fancy let me uh, jack up the bench we can have a look at that so first thing i i notice here now is all the cables are new very nice that saves me a big job it has, as you see, a very big carb. This is a TMX 30. The owner wasn't quite sure. <laughs> he built this, he built, the thing is, he built the engine um, in 2016 and 17. And he's done, he's really uh, chosen some exceptionally uh, high shelf items for this, uh, for this build. I am really, really pleased with that. And he has started it up a couple of times and run down the garden because the registration, it's not been registered yet on, uh, on the guy who built it. So all the papers and everything are going to end up being transferred over to us. And uh, I just need to uh, buy myself a uh, classic number plate and then put some insurance on it. And we, we sorted there. But uh, engine-wise, it has... Um, a TS1-225, really cool thing I see from uh, this side here is it's actually also got a LTH manifold on there. It's got new silent blocks. It's a SIL 200 engine case. Uh, let me move you over a little bit. Let's have a look. And another really nice thing is it has parts that I'd choose myself. I'm really, really pleased with that. It has a MB adjuster block, which means that you can route your cable slightly different. I'm not really keen on the carb on the wrong side uh, anymore, but uh, we'll let that slide. <laughs> We're hopefully going to um, going to get this to uh, to run, and uh, I'm really hoping, and so is Shrek too, is that uh, we can uh, he can join me on the rally that is in Oslo in June. So yeah, we have to get our skates on really, uh, if we want to sort this out. It's got a brand new wiring loom. It has a BGM shock, which is nice. It has new BGM um, flywheel. Uh, on the insides, it has the BGM Pro uh, crankshaft. It has a, what else has it got? Ooh, uh, it's got a BGM, uh, clutch which is really cool I haven't tried those yet so give me a chance to try that and test it it has the actuators here uh, gear swivel points and stuff that's also MB one little niggle I see is it has the original let me angle it down a bit it still has the original kickstart problem with that is not, uh, at the moment it's stopping on on the engine stop and not stopping on the um, on the buffer on the engine case. Uh, I was also in uh, looking at scooter center. I thought I'd uh, fix that with one of those uh, Spark that I've used. They're pretty good. Unfortunately, they're empty for that as well. So I've got a quick fix for that. That's another video coming up. Um, another really interesting thing is it has gen the generation one. Uh, gearbox the uh, DRT Cyclone 5 and I had one of those and that actually was uh, really reliable it was all the ones in the middle that were a pain in the arse but the pain in the arse on this is the fact that the DRT Cyclone 5 the early one uh, it was a bit of a pain to shim so what I'm thinking uh, the, the owner told me that he didn't quite get the gears to work so I've had one of these gearboxes before and it worked fine so I'm really going to have to uh, strip this engine and sort out the gearbox. I might buy um, 
I think the most expensive part I want to buy is the Casa Performance M plate just to ease uh, the fact that it, it, it is quite, they are quite hard to shim. So I'm going to uh, buy that M plate there and shim the gearbox. That's my plan. Uh, Sebastian is going to uh, strip the top end. The reason for this is because it's been stood since 2017, 16, 17. Uh, how many years is that? I said five years it's been stood still. And I really want to uh, make this reliable. And it's quite an easy job. Everything is really clean. It's unused. So what we're thinking of doing is uh, stripping the engine, strip the top end. We're going to change out all the seals, the bearings we don't need to change. But I really want to have a look in there and see how it is. I might even uh, try and start this up before I strip it just to... Uh, just to see if it runs, but apparently it runs, and I do trust the owner. He has he's been quite meticulous in uh, choice of parts here, and he's, uh, I can see that he's done a really good job. It's probably the tidiest looking scooter I've ever uh, owned that I haven't fixed myself, so I'm really, really pleased with that. Another thing I want to do is uh, strengthen the... Uh, Series 1s and 2s quite notorious, even Series 3s do it. I want to strengthen the, uh, the bar, the engine, uh, the engine holder on the frame there. I want to put a little strengthening joint on that, weld it up. That's easily done. I'll do that myself. And uh, yeah, so it, it should really be quite an easy project, but there is quite a bit of work. And I want to do a little bit of uh, patina on this just to make it look a little bit more authentic. Another massive upgrade on this, although I don't, I'm not really keen on uh, long-range fuel tanks, but I did get the, uh, I have got a medium-range fuel tank, and I got the um, original toolbox for this, so I can swap it out if I will. The only thing is, it's a little bit annoying. Last week, I threw out a toolbox that I had modified to fit a DMX30, so that would have been, ah, what an, what an idiot. I mean, I was so, I've, I've had it sitting around for five years, I haven't used it, but I definitely have could have uh, used it on this. So what I'm thinking of doing actually, is just keeping the uh, Mikuni, um, the oil tech tank. This, by the way, is my old oil tech tank. It's me that has written the old Mikuni thing on there. And this one also has a little cutout so you can put some oil in, uh, in your toolbox. So you can utilize a little bit of the toolbox. And I'm thinking, he's only doing one trip, one long, long trip. Maybe we should have a rear rack or something. But I think um, I still have a Series 1 front rack. And he might have to have a rucksack on the inside of his uh, leg shields for his, for his gear. And I can, I've got loads of capacity on my, my scooter. So I can put maybe some of his stuff on there as well. This seat looks absolutely stunning. Uh, looks really nice. Top quality seat. I'm not sure the producer or the maker. It says in the, on the inside there, made in Italy, 100% made in Italy. I think either Rimini Lambretta Center or maybe uh, BGM have uh, sold this one. Uh, seems pretty comfy. And it's got this like nice uh, waffled side there. So that's going to be a keeper. And uh, yeah. I am chuffed to bits for what a spec, eh? What a great spec. So uh, I think I'll t try and tell you, explain uh, what I'm going to do with this. And uh, so you can uh, keep an eye out for future videos and uh, see how we get on. Right, so this is my plan of attack. This is what I'm thinking. We have to do this as cheap as possible. So we're going to do nothing to the, uh, to the paint. We're going to give it a little bit of patina, maybe stick some stickers on there, patina the stickers something for later, a bit of cosmetics. I'm going to change the front mug guard. I'm going to change the front hub. Um, yeah, like I explained why I'm, why I'm going to do that. Because the thing is, my thinking is, this is my son who is going to be riding this. And he, I, I really want it to be uh, reliable. And, but most importantly, I want it to be safe. So I really hope that this uh, front drum is up to the business. I've checked the back brake. That seems quite uh, strong, actually. I could uh, lock the rear brake. So it does have at least one brake that's working well. So hopefully we can uh, try and fettle the front brake uh, on the new hub that's coming and, and try and get that to uh, at least uh, be able to slow him down a little bit. 
Another thing he fancies, he really likes the Revy motors, which is the opposite of me. And I have an Aventi Xbox, Avanti Xbox ST, as you know. That, that, I didn't sell it. It's in my loft. So we're going to fit the uh, Avanti on this. Give it a little bit of noise. And uh, to utilize the uh, revs that you can get out of a TS1 engine. Now, I'm not going to lower, lower the port timings. I'm going to keep this a little bit of a rev monster because that's what he... Uh, he, uh, he wants, he wants to have a little bit of fun. And uh, what else was I gonna say? Um, yeah, that, that, I wanna fit tubeless tires. He's already chosen a set of uh, tubeless rims that he wants in uh, quite a funky color, but more of that later. Uh, the Avanti exhaust, what else do I wanna buy? The end plate, I have to sort out the engine. Yeah, it's really quite a quick project, so, um, Hopefully, uh, within the next couple of weeks, I've been able to take out this engine and uh, Sebastian is going to run you through how he overhauls a Lambretta engine, which should be really interesting. It's good to get the kids involved, isn't it? And uh, yeah, really chuffed. I'm really chuffed. What do you think? Comment down below. And the price. Wow. I'm just, we're just so lucky on this one. I just couldn't say no. And uh, uh, the fellow who uh, put it out, he uh, who sold it, he uh, he has quite a few nice uh, scooters in his collection, actually. And um, very nice uh, bloke to talk to. And is a bit of a pedantic, I reckon, because uh, everything that's been done on this has been done really well. So I'm not really expecting any trouble whatsoever uh, with this project. And hopefully, within the month, we've got the new number plate. We can get Shrek out on the road. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that because uh, at the moment he hasn't got a motorbike he can ride together with me and uh, he misses the old uh, two-stroke, the smell of two-stroke, which is great, which is great news. So this is definitely not going to get sold. <laughs> Famous last words, eh? Anyway, uh, if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget you can support the channel. At the moment, we're pretty desperate for money. <laughs> if we're going to get him on the road. Um, and you can support the channel by buying us a cup of coffee or you can uh, grab a t-shirt or some merch underneath the video here. And uh, yeah, I love you and leave you. And I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs> ta -ra!